Future Proof is sponsored by Learn Smart Academy, online revision courses for GCSE and A-Level. All your revision in one place, organised for you, interactive and game-changing. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarah Hopwood. Um, this is Future Proof, and you, if you were with me in the first half, you'll know that in today's session I'm looking at waste, Toyota 7 waste, uh, the five waste uh, mine shop process we're going to be looking at. And just going into the break, I was talking about uh, the business improvement stages of um, dealing with um, a business as a whole, and waste features right in the middle there. So the structure is really, really important eliminating waste on all levels and we're going to be looking at that and then the beliefs and um, making sure that everybody is signed up if you like to the core values and the beliefs of the business the capabilities of the business the aspirations of the business um, and the creativity of the business and all that eventually that that should be done in the recruitment process way before you get there. You should be recruiting on beliefs a year or two, if you like, ahead, if you're able to do that, to make sure that you get uh, the right staff in the team that are right behind you, they're familiar with the business, and they can really help push you forward. Now, the mind shop process we have um, now where how and I have talked about this before and all I want to say about this is so often when we have a problem so that's now we've got a problem too often we knee jerk into fixing it fixing it fixing it here's a problem fix or here's a problem how here's a problem how and we fumble and we trip and we fall and what we say here is right here we are now let's assess where we are now what is good what needs improving and what needs binning and then you say right this is an opportunity so where is it that we want to be and that's not just about a positioning in the marketplace that's staff wise that's geographical wise um that's whether you're diversifying or, or whatever you're solidifying, whatever you're doing, uh, international, online, you know, where do we want to be? And then you work out how do we get there? And, um, and if you are struggling to find out action plans under how, then I would suggest that not enough work has been done on the where. Because if you do enough work on the where, you can really start to smell, taste and feel what that well looks like, where looks like. And you actually get excited. People get smiles on their faces. How to get there. People should be just be coming out with ideas the whole time because they can really sense what the where looks like. Lean manufacturing, the lean, um, lean enterprise produces more with existing resources by eliminating non-value added activities. So you get more out of what you've got and you get rid of the stuff that's not serving you. It is targeted at the elimination of waste in every area of production, including customer relations, uh, product design, supplier networks and factory man management to name a few. Now what does, so to be lean it's basically um, do more with what you've got and also as you're buying forward make sure that something works very very well for you before you take it um, on board and you know I've some so for example bad recruitment getting the wrong person in because you haven't followed a uh, rigorous recruitment process that costs you money in what you lose the customers that might leave and then also then the cost of getting the person out of the business so uh, lean is is really um, running a, a rigorous recruitment process is part of it what does the five step um, process look like um, reduction process look like first of all there's an audit so with that it's it is looking at the tangibles where are we now and uh, that's um, a, a full audit on um, from from product to, uh, to, to, to what you're you know producing even services to um, uh, money and, and also to staff you know a full audit of where things are and you could get departments to do their own and then bring them in and collate them around the door boardroom table then prioritize and you can use your magic wand in there teams I talked about project teams maybe some from some of those priorities get some teams to really dig around to just find out more about it and what it means and what the growth impact is and the effect on growth and profits measure the outcomes do have timelines in there do have benchmarks you know so in three months time we will reassess to double check we're on so on course 
it's very dangerous to run with some great ideas and say yes let's convene next year and, and let's see how well we've done you know it could be that within three to four months it's blooming obvious that something is not quite working so make sure you put in benchmarks and assessments and also if you're using project teams they can report back and um, I have talked before about an eight week project team so why don't you say every eight weeks we will report back we will benchmark and it fits with something called a PDCA cycle too to plan do check and act and it's that checking um, that fits with the measurement and then um, stage five is to repeat so the waste audit uh, we've looked at where uh, now where how and the first step of the audit um, is to look at the waste levels and the best opportunity to start reducing those so what are the seven wastes you've been waiting for this haven't you get to those seven wastes well here they are overproduction, waiting, uh, transporting, inappropriate processing, inventory, motion and defects. So what do they mean? Well overproduction can mean duplication, um, producing without guarantee of sales, errors, waiting can be waiting time, work in progress, freight or storage, transport, stock layout, subcontracting or travel, inappropriate processing, senior partners doing the work that the juniors should be doing. Sometimes that is posturing, that's hanging on because they're frightened. If I delegate this, what will I do? Or will um, clients think less of me? You should be speaking up subordinates, you know, and that's all about legacy and contribution too. Uh, in inventory, uh, raw materials, old stock, product range, motion, factory layout, desk layout. You know, if you've got somebody who's responsible for photocopying, for example, I know we probably don't do that much now, but you know, why would you have their desk right over the other side of the office? It should be by the photocopier. And it's the idea if you had a piece of string tied to your head and a map was laid out through your whole activities through the day, how much running around are you doing that is completely unnecessary? Defects, uh, reworking stuff, in other words, get it right first time, uh, production faults and errors. So um, what you need to do is then carry out the audit. And you've seen a similar grid to this, if you've watched other programs, on um, decision matrix. And it's the same kind of idea here of scoring yourselves. And what you're looking at is what is the area of work? How much is it costing the business? because once you identify how much it's costing the business, that would really focus your mind as to which ones you would prioritize first. And then you've got this scoring of minus five to plus five, which I've said before is much more accurate. Zero is I don't know. So if you ever see a zero, it's just somebody either doesn't know or it literally is right in the middle but it will give you an accurate reading. And in this particular audit, you are marking it um, ease of doing because you're looking at internal impact, you're looking at logistics. How easy is it to um, remove or to make the changes that are necessary? So if you look at the cost that you could save and then look at the ease of removal, those two items, those answers, should tell you straight away which ones you should prioritise. But of course, you've got so many things to think about. It's not easy. So once you've listed things down, why not uh, put them on a map? Why not show which ones will bring the most savings and which ones are, the, are more easy to remove? And it's a visual thing, so it's great for persuading and for teaching and for inspiring and even arguably delegation as well to actually show your answers on a map. So there's a visual there as well as a, a, a vocal. And obviously the box that you want to work in is the top right hand corner where ease of removal features high. So it's um, anything from five to 10. And also then the savings then are high. So in this example, you have a tick right at the bottom right hand side where it says the savings are enormous 
but the ease of getting rid of it is very, very low. It's not easy. So you've got to really weigh up. Do we just run blindly with the money and just autocratically tell the business it's got to change because it's going to save so much money? Or could we lose staff through that process? Could we lose morale, which then reduces productivity? So you've really got to scenario plan the consequences of what you do with that information. But what I recommend to you is work in that top right hand side box where those three crosses are. And of course, the one that I think should come out as a priority is either the one that shows highest ease of removal or the one if, that is further along showing the greatest savings. They would be the top two. And then the one underneath that would then be my preferred um, third option. So in summary, first of all, I will be continuing this in the next program. And I just want to say, don't forget the structure of a business is the first change you have. Then you sort out waste and then you sort out the all important beliefs.